Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today we're going to see what's dirtier, our money, our mouths, or things around the house. This is the follow-up video to a video we did a few weeks ago when we showed you how to make your own auger petri dishes to grow the bacteria that's around your house. It was a really simple demonstration to do and our plates turned out great. We ended up buying our petri dishes and auger powder off of Amazon. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you watching that one first to see our step-by-step -step process so you can do it at home, and then come back to watch this video showing our results. We took samples from our mouths. Time out. Before we get into that, just a quick reminder about our website, homeschoolscienceclub.com. Here you'll find free worksheets that go along with most of our videos. If your kids watch our videos, they can do the worksheets, and it's a free and complete science lesson for you. You don't even have to think about it. Also on our website, you'll find a growing library of x-rays that are labeled and without label that you can download, among other things. Again, it's all free. If you get any benefit from our website or the YouTube channel, please consider subscribing below. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the show and see our results. Oh, time in. We took samples from our mouths, remote controls, and my money. Notice I said my money because you still haven't paid me back. We also took samples of the refrigerator, light switches, and kitchen sink. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. If Captain America were born in Brazil, would he be Captain South America? <sighs> I think we should just go look at the samples. Right. Let's take this to the house. We ended up storing our petri dishes in the laundry room. We figured it was the driest and darkest place in the house. And it wouldn't be a homeschool experiment if we didn't take some time to discuss it and create our own hypothesis. So, what do you think the dirtiest thing is going to be? Funny enough, neither one of my kids guessed the right answer. The interesting thing about our results is they were pretty much identical to the National Sanitation Foundation study results that they did in 2011. They found that coliform bacteria was more prevalent on kitchen surfaces than bathroom countertops. And that is especially gross because coliform bacteria is a family of bacteria that contain E. coli and salmonella, which are rod-shaped bacteria found in the poop of all warm-blooded species. In fact, the study said you're more likely to find me in the kitchen than the bathroom. <laughs> Specifically, the study actually said they only found coliform bacteria on the faucets of the bathroom in about 9% of the time versus 45% of the time in the kitchen. Nearly half of the kitchens they sampled had microscopic poop particles on their faucets. That's really gross. So with that being said, let's see how our household objects compared to those in the study back in 2011. Even though we did our best to be as clean as possible and maintain sterility, we made a controlled petri dish to account for any contamination. Here's our control dish, and again, we didn't put any bacterial swabs in it. We knew that anything that grew in this was likely secondary to contamination. As you can see, it stayed pretty clean with the exception of two spots of growth. And now we know any growth in the other dishes that looks similar to that is likely from contamination, and growth in other dishes that don't look like that is likely from the source material. Now let's look at our auger plate for the kitchen sink. Quite frankly, I was expecting it to be a lot dirtier, but you can see this one area of bacterial growth that clearly looks different in both shape and color than what grew in our control dish. Because of that, we definitely know that whatever it is, it came from the sink and didn't come from the contamination process of making our auger petri dishes. What's really interesting is when you look at the light switch that's also in the kitchen, you can see a colony of bacteria that's the same color and shape or morphology as the one we saw in our kitchen sink. So it stands to reason that these are likely being spread by human touch from one surface to the other. What was really cool for the kids is having them look at the bacterial growth underneath the microscope. This is the same Carson microscope that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago and we were able to get some really interesting images. For example, this is a more close-up image of the yellow bacterial colony that was growing on our sink and light switch. Looking at our refrigerator door is when things began to get real messy. This was simultaneously super cool and super gross. We put this under the microscope and instantly realized we needed to clean our refrigerator much more often. Next, we were somewhat surprised by the results. See, both my kids thought that the remote and the money would be the dirtiest of all the samples we collected, when in fact, they were actually pretty clean. The NSF study showed the same thing, showing things that were smooth and cold like money and computer keyboards tended to harbor less germs. 
So far, we know our kitchen, especially our refrigerator door, is very dirty, and our remotes are cleaner than we thought they'd be. Now it's time for us to figure out if our mouths are as clean as we hoped they'd be. And it turns out, the answer is no. Our mouths have a bacteria in them called Streptococcus. See, the real problem with Streptococcus when it comes to our mouth and dental hygiene is the more sugar it is exposed to, the more acid it secretes. That is why the more candy that you eat, the more likely you are to end up in the dentist's office. <laughs> So when we look at the swab from my son's mouth, we can see some bacterial growth, but honestly, I was expecting a little bit more. In my daughter's mouth, however, well, she did not disappoint. Oh baby, look at that. That's gross. Using the microscope, we took a picture of some of that sweet bacterial goodness. So that's our experiment on growing bacteria in your homemade Petri dishes. If you do something like this at home, I guarantee your kids will enjoy it. If they're just watching along for the video, in a few days we'll have the associated worksheet up for download that they can complete as well. I'll put a link in the description for all the materials that we use that we purchased off Amazon. There'll also be another link for that microscope that we highly recommend that came in real handy with this experiment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this, and we'll see you next week.